Welcome to The Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we're going to be talking about cervical facet joint syndrome. I'll be posting new videos weekly, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. Cervical means obviously neck, and so as a reminder, here's a model of the neck. There's the back of your skull, there's the front of the neck, there's the back of the neck, and the facet joint in the neck are these little joints in the back that connect each of the bones in the back. So the front of the spine has a disc that connects the bone, but in the back, there's something called a facet joint. So the facet joint moves when your neck moves like this. So here's a front back view of the facet. Here's a side view of the facet joint. So the facet joint is a true joint. A joint is made out of bone and bone and there's cartilage at the end of the bone and just like your knee joint these bones move and they move smoothly because there's supposed to be joint fluid in them as well as cartilage the facet joint because there's fluid in them is covered by a capsule so here's a good picture of it so there's a bone there's a bone this is a joint capsule, which is soft tissue around, and this stuff is the fluid that's in the joint, and there's also cartilage here, which I actually haven't drawn. The facet joint itself can have pain because the capsule can get torn, and the reason you have pain is because there's something called the medium branch nerve. The medium branch is something that supplies sensation to the capsule. So the medium branch nerve is not one of the main big spinal nerves. It's not one of these big nerves. It's a branch off of this big nerve that feeds the facet joint and it's a sensory ner nerve to the facet joint. Patients often complain of facet joint syndrome after a car accident because with acute whiplash with flexion extension where there's whiplash, that capsule can tear. It's pretty common in young people. It could be common after you do an activity where you turn your neck and you pull the facet joint and as a result, you can get facet joint related pain. The most curious thing about cervical facet joint related pain is that even though the cervical facet is located up here in the back of your neck, typically the facet joint can refer pain down by the shoulder blade, even though anatomically it's up here. So they've done studies on where the facet joint refers pain to. You can see that the C5-6 and the C6-7 facet, which are the most commonly injured, actually refer pain to the shoulder blade. Now the upper cervical facets, C2-3, C3-4, kind of stay up here, but the lower ones, C5-6 and C6-7, they can go by the shoulder blade. Facet joint syndrome is never treated surgically. Surgery does not work for that. Never let anyone operate on you for cervical facet joint pain. Cervical facet joint pain can be treated by anti-inflammatories to take the inflammation off the facet joint. These are taken orally. It can also be treated with medication. One of the most effective things for treating facet joint pain is desensitizing the facet joint itself. So how is that done? Well, I just told you that the facet joint is supplied by something called the median branch nerve. Well, neck pain is very complicated. It's multifactorial. It can come from muscles, ligaments, discs, nerves, etc. So our first test is, yes, I think you have facet joint pain, but is it really coming from the facet joint? So first we have to do something called a medium branch block. This is not surgery. This is done by an interventional physiatrist, interventional radiologist, or a pain management doc. But literally what they do is they take you to a surgery center, take a needle, and very carefully target that facet joint capsule. And what they're doing is it's called a median branch block. It's exactly what it sounds like. They take a needle, come in, and they block the median nerve. So they essentially try to take this out of the equation. And what they're blocking it with is with an anesthetic. It's just a numbing agent. That numbing agent usually doesn't last more than three to six hours. It doesn't matter though. It's a diagnosis. It's not a treatment. So the median branch block blocks the nerve that's going to the joint. Typically, most insurances require you to get two medium branch blocks before you actually treat the source of the pain, which is obviously the nerve and the torn capsule. So a good outcome is 80% reduction in the pain over three to six hours. So you would get two medium branch blocks, they would go in, 
do a median branch block, a successful outcome again is relief of pain. You would typically do another median branch block three to six weeks later to verify that it's a source because you really want to make sure that's the source. After that, you can do something more permanent called a radio frequency ablation. A radio frequency ablation is equivalent to what's called a rhizotomy. Those are the same words. So what that means is the same doc takes not a needle, but a radio frequency probe and actually burns the nerve, burns the nerve in order to desensitize the facet joint. This is obviously more permanent because you're burning a nerve. Burning a sensory nerve is not a problem um, because it's not a functional nerve, it's just causing sensation. So once they burn the nerve, that's a more permanent solution, again, called an RFA, which is the same as a rhizotomy. It's a peripheral nerve. Peripheral nerves grow back. Some patients need repeat rhizotomies or ablations every six months, uh, again, and not a dangerous thing to do. A subset of patients not just have a little tear around the capsule, but they have significant arthritis, and these are older patients. So what can happen is in some patients, you can actually see on the MRI that the cartilage here at the level of the joint is actually disrupted. And again, you would see this on the MRI because you would see inflammation. When there's a lot of cartilage loss and you wanna get the medicine into the joint, you can actually do a steroid injection into the facet joint. So there's something called a facet joint injection. The facet joint injection is not having to do with the capsule, but it's taking a needle and inserting it directly into the joint and putting steroid directly into the joint. I've actually found that that works quite well for patients that are older, have arthritic joints. Typically that happens high up, frankly, at C3-4, we put medicine and it calms the joint down. That obviously is a temporary solution. It's not treating the arthritis. Nothing can really reverse arthritis, which is cartilage loss, but it does take some inflammation off and it stops the cycle of inflammation. And sometimes that's all you need. You can have repeated intra-articular facet injections um, no more than two or three a year because it starts degrading the soft tissue. The diagnosis of facet joint syndrome is uh, rarely made on MRI unless there's a lot of arthritis because you can't really see the facet capsule on MRI. Other non-surgical treatments for facet joint syndrome include physical therapy and strengthening the muscles around the facet joint, so physical therapy can be great. And frankly, uh, chiropractic care, particularly with something called active release treatment, ART, can actually be quite useful for facet joint syndrome. Usually facet joint syndrome is self-limiting, typically gets better after six to 12 weeks of injuring the facet joint. Uh, although I do see patients with year after year pain who have to be treated with multiple rhizotomies and it can be a cause of chronic neck pain. Again, not treated surgically, uh, but there are interventional ways to treat this. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about cervical facet joint syndrome. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you would like to see in the future.